I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're speaking with Kara Copeland. She is the talented author behind the captivating book, Laurel, Bride of Arkansas, a mail order bride series, book 25. It presents a riveting tale set in the midst of historical America as part of an expansive 50 book American mail order bride series. The author skillfully crafts a narrative that weaves together love, adventure, and the quest for happiness and belonging. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Bookside Press for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel, but more importantly, ordering her wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Kara, great to see you here today. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, my pleasure. So how did you get involved with this Mail Order Bride series? I know, if not personally, I know on Facebook, all of the authors who participated, and I was invited to write one of the books. Uh, and so as it turns out, I received the state of Arkansas. My uh, father-in-law is from Arkansas, and his name is Laurel. So I named, you know, after him for his state and um, then came up with the ideas to, to write her story. Now, did you know anything about mail order brides or this chapter in history when you started out? Yes, yes. Hmm. It's, we discuss it quite often and the readers seem to love them. So uh, there's there are many mail order bride stories out there and uh, they're they're all unique and individual and just wonderful to read. Let's give the folks at home an overview of what your story, Laurel, is all about. Okay. Um, Laurel is uh, about a woman who wanted to escape the Society of Philadelphia, and she went to live with an uh, an aunt in, uh, uh, I've lost the state. Um, anyway, she went to live with her. Uh, and, Massachusetts, uh, perhaps. Oh, that was very good. There we Thank go. you so much. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. And so... Um, she her aunt is lost in a tornado uh they never found her and so she moved a, a city or two away and went to work in a factory where they uh spent the thread so when that factory burns down she has very limited choices she can either go back to philadelphia with her family and marry someone she has no intention of doing or she can go join uh the mail order bride uh she reads a, an ad in the bride's uh, book and um, she goes, uh, writes this a gentleman and he answers her back. Um, and so she finds a new life in Arkansas, something she never planned on and had no idea how to enter into. Amazing. And so everything ensued after that and she found her happy, happily ever after. That's wonderful. What was it like writing this book for you? Did you uh, take months, weeks, a year? Was it mornings, it, nights, whenever you could find time? Tell us a little bit about the uh, work of being a writer. Yeah, it's it's hard sometimes to fit it in with around family and husbands and and things. But you, I found time during the usually in the evening um, when uh, my husband had gone to bed and I could sit and do that, um, and I found it interesting using my husband's uh my father-in-law's name of laurel and then uh i we wove in the stories of uh one of the relatives had lost their their mother in a in a tornado in arkansas and um then this the spinning in the factory my mother did that in north carolina when she was married to my dad during the World War II. So I, I wove in different ad, uh, places from our family that um, fit, it, fit into the story. Um, uh, my husband's family has uh, relatives in Philadelphia. So I used that part and used all of those ladies' names. Um, so it was a family story written about someone else. And it was fun to do. 
I enjoyed coming up with the different uh, ideas to fit them in. Yeah, and, and, uh, it's, and piecing a little bit here, a little bit there, uh, and melding uh, it all together. That must have been rewarding. I found it fascinating. I knew nothing about this chapter of history of mail uh, order brides. So uh, tell the folks at home a little bit about why there are mail order brides, you know, what the purpose of them were, and uh, what the era was. Um, it was around, uh, still in the Victorian era. Uh, this one takes place in 1890, um, and the most of the men who went west didn't have, there were no women in a lot of the towns, and uh, they needed someone either to help take care of their house or their, their wife passed away. They needed someone to take care of their children and help raise their family, and so that came about with uh, different uh uh, papers, newspapers, where uh, the men would place ads to uh, uh, solicit these, you know, different women. And then the women would read them if they were needing uh, to have support. Women couldn't really work back then in too many ways, and they had to be supported by men uh, to be the head of the house because women couldn't do that back then. Um, so they would answer these ads, they would read them and see if, you know, they liked any of the uh, stories that the men told. And I've written two or three of the mail order brides myself ser uh, in other uh, series. And uh, I think it's fun to, yeah. to help them find where they need to be. Yeah, it, it's, it's very, very interesting. I mean, it's really not much different than Match.com, except it's <laughs> not digital, right? I mean, True. people always have a need for a significant other. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it's kind of like uh, when somebody says their great grandparents met on Tinder, they're not lying. Uh -huh. It was just a, a different, uh, it was just a different uh, format. Right. Then. And so but, many times the, the women would meet them, uh, go to meet the men they had no idea what they looked like right what what their uh live lively uh their lifestyle was like mm. and they went in both both sides went into it blind as yeah. to what they were going to get so exactly now well it, it sounds like you really set upon this as a fun adventure writing uh -huh. and creating the world and working in with the confines that you know your editor has given you that i need a book about arkansas i need a book about um, romance. I need a book about mail order brides, right? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it, it started out with uh, the lead author who came up with the idea. She wrote the first part of the chapter, first part of the book, and we used from that uh, where the women were in the the factory and when the, it burned and it started with uh, them trying to figure out what they were going to do next. So we borrowed, each of us authors borrowed from, from that to get our start and uh, head out. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, yeah, you don't always have that. And uh, so you kind of have to come up with things on your own as to what happened. And uh, I used that. And then I, a lot of times I used weather as a, as a character. Yeah. So that's always fun to fit the weather in. Because Laurel encountered uh, forest fires and tornadoes, and <laughs> she, when she got to the to Arkansas, she had a lot to deal with there. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Tell me a little bit about your life as a writer. How many books have you written, uh, and that kind of thing? Um, I've written eighteen books so far. Um, I started probably back in 1995, starting with the idea of becoming a writer and um, wrote a little bit, but never got anything published. And then life took over mm -hmm. until about 2011. And I started um, getting in with uh, the uh, romantic uh, writers groups and uh, things like that to help promote. I got joined a critique group with some lovely ladies and uh, good authors um, and went from there and developed my stories from wonderful. there. Well, wonderful. And, well, uh, we're glad you got the writing bug and that you just kept on writing. 
because this latest story is really, really terrific. It is Thank called you. Laurel, Bride of Arkansas, a mail order bride series, book number 25. You will love the adventures of Laurel as she goes and meets a young man that she has uh, no idea who he really is until they meet and the love story that ensues and the challenges that they face. Kara, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan. It was wonderful to be here and I enjoyed it so much. I'm so glad you did. I enjoyed it as well. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.